AI in the Middle East is about to go vertical. Check this out. The idea behind Vision 2030 is to shift the mix of the economy for Saudi Arabia to become a net exporter. One of the things that's hard to export is energy. You have to move it, it's physical, it costs money. Electricity, transporting it over transmission lines is very expensive. Data is very cheap to move. Since there's plenty of excess energy in the kingdom, the idea is move the data here, put the compute here, do the computation for AI here and send the results. So we're building out an enormous data center here. We've already deployed 19,000 chips. We're gonna expand that significantly with this investment. And that's going to lead to, well, actually we're already the largest compute cluster in the Middle East and possibly even in Europe, just from Damam. Right, where are these chips coming from? So we actually make our chips in the US. Upstate New York. Uh, upstate New York. Okay, so US made chips coming US into Saudi chips. Arabia. Yeah. How do they compare to NVIDIA's best offering? So NVIDIA's best offering is very competitive, but we offer something very different. It's a little bit like the difference between dial-up and broadband. GPUs are dial-up. They're great. You know, when you don't have access to the internet, getting dial-up's great. We offer broadband. So when you use our chips, you usually get the results 10 times faster. But also the other problem is the cost of AI. Right now, there's a bunch of people just starting to get used to AI and they're using it and their bills are kind of low. Once you start using it heavily, your bills grow dramatically. And it doesn't help if you're fast, if you're also expensive, because the faster you are, the more AI you use. Like think about doing a chat GPT query and waiting 10 minutes for a deep research result. If you're fast, if you deliver that answer in a minute instead of 10 minutes, you now ask 10 times as many questions. So what we also do is in addition to making it fast, we actually make it much more affordable. And so now you can handle AI with a more limited budget. Okay, and this is ultimately the uh, enablement that Grok is trying Correct. to deliver to the kingdom. You're also working with Aramco's digital arm and Humane as well on yeah. this new cluster. This is the 20,000 chip cluster that you Correct. were talking about here in Saudi Arabia. Talk to me about that collaboration. Ultimately, what's the end goal here? And what did you make of Humane? Because this is the Arab world's first LLM, at least coming out of Saudi Arabia. Seems like it's received a pr pretty positive response so far. Key barriers remain with that LLM. We signed a deal with Aramco Digital itself, and 51 days after signing that deal, we actually had the 19,000 chips up and running inference in the kingdom. Today, we serve about 150 countries from Saudi Arabia. One of the applications that we serve is Humane Chat. That's the chat for the kingdom. There's also some stuff coming in the near future, maybe even this week, that you'll hear about that's also running on the Grok LPUs in Damam. The main thing here is everyone needs AI in order to automate government services and things like this. This is where sovereign AI is coming from. And just like you have shortages on energy, you can have shortages on compute. By building the compute here, we assure that the kingdom has all the compute that they need for their services. Well, it's just as robust and capable of doing all that. It's optimized for interfacing with the kingdom. So if you need to be able to ask about something here, it has all the data that you need to get the appropriate answers. Whereas other LLMs haven't been tuned, they don't have access to a database that's as rich with information about the local region. Mm. So there's obviously a lot of development happening in this space. You're a key part of this. We hear a lot more about sovereign AI now as well. Nations want their own compute, their own models. Yeah. The region itself, the GCC, wants to become a global AI hub. So what would you say is the biggest competitive advantage and what's the biggest challenge right now? Well, it goes back to what I said about moving data. It's very cheap to move data. It's very expensive to move energy, but there's a lot of energy here. So what you don't want to do is build a data center right next to people where it's expensive for the land or where the energy is already being used. You want to build it where there aren't too many people, where the energy is underutilized. And that's the Middle East. So this is the ideal place to build out. In fact, when we're looking at the OPEX, the cost to run these chips, Saudi Arabia is actually cheaper than some of the Nordic countries. Because of the energy availability. Surplus. Who's going to pay for all of this though? Because obviously the demand for compute is soaring, right? Not just in the GCC, but around the world. We're seeing GPUs also having supply chain challenges and the energy equation when it comes to AI is still largely unsolved at this point. Okay, so this is what all the investors in the world wanna know. Is AI a bubble? What's up with these circular relationships? And if you think back, the beginning of the aviation industry, Boeing funded a lot of their vendors and, and partners in a very circular relationship. And it worked out for the aviation industry. It's why it exists today. There are some differences between that and the internet.com bubble. The main difference is, if you think about AI, 
you've got companies like OpenAI and Tropic. These are two companies where if you double the amount of compute that they have, you double their revenue. In fact, Greg Brockman said they could 5x their revenue with just the models that they have today and the demand they have today if they got extra compute. Like when you go to Anthropic and you hit the rate limits, it's because there's not enough compute. When OpenAI runs slower than you would like, <clears throat> it's because they don't have enough compute. And so by unlocking that, what you're doing is you're allowing them to take a revenue stream that's going to occur over time. You give them the money now, they spend it on CapEx and it unlocks it. So this is not like the aviation unlock that happened. So you're confident that we are not in an AI bubble at this point, even when you look at some of the public market valuations around these it's big chip names in the United States. Yeah, so there's subtlety and nuance here. So the thing is, as always, you do want a bubble because the bubble is the sign that there's a lot of economic activity going on and you just attract all sorts of people, right? It won't be long until you have AI powered toothpaste, right? But when you focus on the real AI innovations, you can't put enough money into that and there will be great returns. There will also be people who make mistaken investments that don't return. The question is, is the amount of money that's paid into this AI boom going to be returned with interest? And I think the answer to that is yes. The question is, do you know how to invest in AI? Saudi Arabia just figured out how to export their most abundant resource without pipelines or tankers. They can't efficiently move electricity across oceans, but they can move data instantly. So they're building massive AI data centers powered by cheap local energy, doing the computation in Saudi Arabia and exporting the results globally. Meanwhile, a chip company called Grok, whose CEO Jonathan Ross we just heard from, is challenging Nvidia's dominance by building hardware specifically for AI inference that's 10 times faster and dramatically cheaper. Here's why the Middle East is becoming an AI superpower and how Grok's specialized chips have an attempt at Nvidia's monopoly. Wealthy Middle Eastern nations with excessive energy are the perfect location for AI data centers because moving data is cheap while moving electricity is expensive, letting them export computational results instead of physical energy. Grok CEO Jonathan Ross explains Vision 30's goal is shifting Saudi Arabia to become a net exporter by leveraging their excess energy. Saudi Arabia has essentially unlimited cheap energy from oil and gas, but they can't efficiently sell all of it. You can't put electricity on a ship and send it to Europe. Pipelines and energy facilities are expensive infrastructure with geopolitical complications. But if you convert that energy into computation and export the results digitally, you solved the export problem. AI computation is incredibly energy intensive. Training and running large language models require massive amounts of electricity. Tech companies are scrambling for power capacity in places like Northern Virginia, where data center clusters are driving up local energy costs. Saudi Arabia has the opposite problem. They have more energy production capacity than local demand can absorb. The unique economics work perfectly. Energy costs in Saudi Arabia are low. Land is abundant and cheap in desert areas. Cooling costs are manageable with modern data center designs. You can build enormous facilities without the constraints that limit expansion in places like Silicon Valley. Saudi Arabia already serves 150 companies, proving they're already doing this at scale. When someone in Europe or Asia uses an AI service powered by Grox chips in Saudi Arabia, the computation happening there is using Saudi's energy and the results get transmitted back. The customer doesn't care where the processing happens as long as it's fast and cheap. This creates a sustainable competitive advantage. Unlike manufacturing, which can move to wherever labor is cheapest, data centers are sticky infrastructure investments. Once you've built tens of thousands of chips in a location with cheap, reliable power, you're not relocating. The sovereign AI angle reinforces this. Saudi Arabia wants to ensure they control enough compute for their own government services and applications without depending on foreign providers. Building domestic capacity serves both their own needs and creates export capability. It's energy export strategy updated for the digital age. But the Middle East advantage only works if they have the right chips, which is where a NVIDIA challenger comes in. Grok is challenging NVIDIA by building chips specifically optimized for AI inference that deliver results 10 times faster, a fraction of the cost, turning what used to feel like dial-up internet into broadband speed for AI applications. 
Nvidia dominates AI chips because their GPUs work for everything, training models and running them. But works for everything means they're not optimized for any one thing. Grok saw an opportunity by focusing exclusively on inference, running AI models after they're trained and building hardware specifically for that task. Nvidia's GPUs running inference are like using a Ferrari to deliver pizza. It works, but it's overkill and expensive. Grok built a delivery van optimized specifically for pizza delivery. It's not trying to win races, but it's way better at the actual job you need done. The 10x speed improvement matters enormously for user experience. If every AI query feels sluggish and you're waiting for responses, you use AI less. When responses are near instant, AI becomes part of your natural workflow. You ask follow-up questions, iterate on ideas, use it constantly instead of occasionally. That usage difference is what makes AI actually transformative versus just a novelty. The cost equation is also critical. Right now, AI costs are low for most people because they're casual users, but companies deploying AI at scale are seeing bills explode. If you're running millions of inference requests daily, the cost difference between Nvidia's GPUs and Grok's chips can be millions of dollars annually. That's a difference between AI being economically viable or prohibitively expensive. The feedback loop here is key. Faster responses lead to more usage, which increases total costs unless you also make it cheaper. Grok solves both simultaneously. You get 10 times faster responses and dramatically lower cost per query. That combination makes AI accessible for applications that couldn't afford it on Nvidia's hardware. This isn't about replacing Nvidia for training, that's still Nvidia's domain. This is about winning the inference market, which is growing faster than training because every trained model needs to run inference millions of times. One training run, millions of inference requests. The challenge for Grok will be ecosystem. Nvidia has CUDA software that every AI framework supports. Developers know how to program for Nvidia. Grok needs to prove their chips work reliably at scale and that integration is easy enough that companies will switch. But if they can clear that hurdle, in my opinion, the performance and cost advantages are substantial enough to take a meaningful market share in the inference segment. Most people pour money into ads people ignore. YouTube changes that, it builds trust, authority, and a real connection at scale. One law firm we worked with landed 33 clients in just five months worth $330,000 from their YouTube channel. If you run a business, this is one of the most overlooked opportunities right now. Book a call with me below and I can show you how we can make it happen.